We all know there are certain things that just have to be done. The true use case for 330 watts of light bulbs on a road car is debatable. But I guess for me it is just character trait. And the bumper is already cracked beyond reasonable repair, so... I did manage to lose the original mounting hardware, so I had to turn a stainless bolt down to clear the lights. The rest was surprisingly easy, and didn't even need support struts. The part that takes time is properly setting up the rest. In my case, I opted for three separate supply relays and a fourth to utilize the rear wiper trigger as a switch for the lights. The third supply relay is to provide power to the auxiliary electronics, namely a proper hidden USB charger and a standard 12 volt socket. The switch is an on off on which will enable the system to run either via the ignition key or via the battery directly if the car is parked. The bracket itself isn't a masterpiece, but allows a hidden mount behind the ECU that requires no holes to be drilled. Measure twice, cut well. As a lucky coincidence, the bracket wouldn't have fit because of a different design issue, so I made a new one, with holes spaced correctly. Once the location is set on all components, each bracket is wired up individually. Because there are wires going to different points in the car, I make sure to keep the mess as neat as possible. The next step is routing the wiring to the lights and pull power directly from the battery, making sure nothing rubs and is shielded where needed. In the end the battery connector had a spare terminal and together with both the upper and lower spotlights the wiring runs smoothly towards the bulkhead, right near the engine loom. I left thinking this would be my only quick job on Monday morning. I still sound like absolute dog shit because my my nose is fully stuffed because I have a kit and that kit brings home all the sickness. But that's not the point. I wanted to take you on a journey of misery because my right foot is wet and really wet with coolant. Also, it is very cold outside and my window is cracked open. The reality that has happened to me right now is my heater core died. Something I had never happened on any other old car that I ever drove. And that means it's spilling coolant into the footwell. The problem is, unlike the Porsches, the valve is on the inside. So even though I put it on full cold, the pressure is still running past that seal, which isn't sealing anymore. Now, if I put it on heat, the leak will get far worse. And also, if I put it on heat, it vaporizes all the wetness inside to the screens, which makes it even worse. To which I have the answer of putting it on a full cold and cracking the window open. The problem is, the car has a non-functioning fuel gauge 
which <laughs> uh, <laughs> made the tank overflow. So with the window cracked open, I'm getting full on gas station vibes. And with the window closed, it fogs up. And with the heater on, my feet get wet. So the wetness is inside, the heat is nowhere to be found, and I'm probably just gonna bypass the heater altogether for the next couple of days, because I don't wanna have this thing sitting in a workshop yet again. Uh, it's terrible. Why does this always happen to me? On a more positive note, it drives fantastic. Like, apart from the drive shaft, I hope you can even hear me, it's pretty loud inside. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining me on this very brief intermission. While the carpet was drying, I went ahead and sourced the signal for the lights straight from the light switch, allowing them to come on with the high beam. All of this has to come out again for the heater repair, but such is life. The brackets receive their final connectors for easy removal of the system, and after some more wiring and the addition of a one-way diode to prevent the current going the wrong way and burning the car down, I only gave a good friend of mine a brief showcase, not knowing the car was yet again to break down. And I had to give it a go with phone footage and voice acting. Here we go. Inside the glove box, there's nothing to be seen. Looking up, all the hidden electronics come into sight. The 12 volt system is on the left, either permanently on or on via the key. The rest of the system controls the lighting. First, turning on the lights, then switching to high beam. Now pressing the wiper switch, it triggers the four additional spotlights. Losses, past don't count. Yesterday don't count. Last night don't count. Mm. Uh. Mm. As you can see, I am not in the workshop. In fact, I'm at a parking lot up my local twisty road. And I have to admit that my light situation doesn't quite work the way I wanted it to. I put this super sophisticated relay in and apparently it doesn't quite want to work the way I want it to because it needs a second 12 volt signal because usually it's a dim dip switch and I haven't connected anything to the second terminal which made it function for a while and now it's purely um, purely a flasher no longer a switch but apart from that man this thing is fun 
it's been a long time coming and there are still some very unpleasant niggles to to beat on this but it has license plates on it and I'm driving it and that's a good feeling I just wanted to let you have a part of this because I just drove up here casually of course and it was great hello 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 <laughs> uh, I was about to pack away but I thought I should uh, tell you at least that this thing is registered and insured but it also still has no functioning fuel gauge and smells like a gas station because I yet again put too much in and I'm now driving around without a heater at all uh, and the drive shafts are about to kill me I think because the one that's new is not the right one and the one that's old is also halfway broken I think the reality is when you do this long enough with these things and you love them for what they are and not as perfect pieces of transportation you realize some things don't even bother you and with that wisdom I shall now leave you this time for real first gear no handbrake. I'm on the clutch, going to second because I'm rolling downhill. As soon as I put power to the thing, this is what happens. The entire car just starts to disengage and, and deteriorate and... Uh, I swear, I'm so, oh, I'm just gonna roll down the hill and then very gently nurse it home and then put it to the workshop because fucking hell, I have no idea what went wrong again. I had a weird moment in a tight turn and then it made oink and now it's this. And I don't know what it is. I'm gonna keep it in neutral. Sorry to be continued.